Sounds good. All right. Hey, that uh, was Daryl, guys. Hey, welcome to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David. And uh, if you guys are ready for some uh, more awesome interviews of people and their experiences um, and sightings of Bigfoot. As a matter of fact, today I got uh, a friend of mine that uh, is actually in my local area. I uh, ran into uh, Daryl uh, up at uh, uh, Beachfoot uh, this year, Beachfoot 2017, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, got to know him and uh, hung out a little bit afterwards and uh, actually hoping to get up there and do some fly fishing around where he lives. So, uh, Anyways, Daryl, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, buddy. Well, let me, inter let me uh, um, just say real quick to everybody that uh, don't forget – I've got the uh, uh, Southern California um, uh, Sasquatch Organization members t-shirt to give away this month. And Robin Hyatt has some awesome, awesome cards uh, that she uh, handmade that I'll be giving away this month. You can check her out over there on Etsy. Uh, and I'll, I'll share the link out again on the Facebook page. Um, also, I want to say thank you guys so very much for you guys supporting uh, PacWest Bigfoot here through getting t-shirts, coffee mugs, and whatever over at my hackwestbigfoot.com and uh, if you can sell me any you know send me any of those little selfie shots with the coffee mug or t-shirt on or whatever love to share those out with everybody um other than that um just a few uh quick shout outs to um uh, Gunner over there at uh, Sasquatch Coffee, uh, squatchcoffee.com. Thank you very much, um, Gunner, uh, for everything and giving me so many stickers to put into everybody's free giveaway every month and uh, all you guys out there. So, and especially to you listening in. So, let's get in. Let's not have me waste any more time. And uh, Daryl uh, actually got a, a, a picture <laughs> of this thing. And uh, I think he was yeah. staring his brother down or somebody down. And uh, so, Daryl, why don't you walk us in and tell us what you were doing that day, where about you were at, and if you don't mind, and, uh, and what, you, um, what yeah. you experienced. Yeah. Yeah, me and a friend of mine were actually elk hunting up above, I think it's out of Roseburg, heading towards – uh, Coos Bay, there's a road called Coos Wagon Road. Mm -hmm. Goes back up in through there. I think it's the old wagon train road that ran supplies back in the day through there. Mm -hmm. But there's a um, there's a little camp up there called Skeeter Camp. There's a, uh, a spring water there where people come and get water and things like that. And it was about probably 10 in the morning. It, it had, uh, the morning hunt was kind of over, so we pulled in there to take a break, have a sandwich. I think we had metal detectors. We were looking around. And as soon as we got in there, we uh, once we got parked and settled down, we we heard some sound kind of sounded like a, a backup alarm on a tractor or some kind of alarm over this little rise. You know, it was like a beep, beep, just a constant sound. And we just came that way, so we knew there was no equipment running. So the friend of mine started walking to the left, kind of over this little rise on an old bogging road to see what it was. So he got away from there probably about 300 yards, and all of a sudden to the right, I was standing at the back of the truck, I think, eating a sandwich, trying to get some service on my cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear this sound that's like someone clicking these clickers together, like when you were a kid, those things you yeah. click together real fast sounded like that you know it wasn't a woodpecker it wasn't anything like that it was way too too loud and too hard so about that time when i heard the sound i looked over to the right where it was coming from and i see this thing kind of squat down behind these trees bushes and i just grabbed my phone my cell phone and took a couple pictures and i thought it was a bear and i also had a bear tag for hunting so i went to the back of my truck i had already got my had my gun put up so I unzipped my gun case, got my gun out and put the scope on it. And then it was gone. And, um, by that time, my friend had started walking back cause he had heard that sound too. And then we kind of off to the right of that further off, we heard that beeping kind of sound again, kind of way off. So I, I don't know, but then once we started looking at the picture and I zoomed in on it, he's like, Whoa, that looks like a Bigfoot. So I was like, wow, it does. We walked over to the area, you know, there's so much stuff on the ground in the forest. Can't really see any tracks or anything mm -hmm. where it was at. But um, 
that area right there also, you know, you, there's other stories of people seeing Bigfoots around there. Mm-hmm. But that's pretty much what happened that day. Yeah, I saw that picture, mm-hmm. and um, when you blow it up, I mean, it's pretty unmistakable to see, you know, like the head and the, uh, almost like the eye socket area of something, and it seemed like there was, like, light on top of, like, you know, like a blinding light on top of, like, dark fur, like the sun is, just, like, beaming right off of something. Yeah, there was a real sunny spot right there mm-hmm. behind those bushes where the thing squatted down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. but uh, you know, I could I could totally see the whole shape of it, but I kind of it was a ways away. I kind of thought it was a bear at first, a big black thing, you know. Mm-hmm. That was just the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah, and then you know, I, I snapped those couple pictures. They're actually on my other my other phone that I had at the time. It's been about eighteen months ago. Well, whenever elk season is, I think it's November or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so that was should uh, be two years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's not that long ago because you don't, you don't live that far from me. And I think you were talking no, a little bit about no. a place called Skeeter Camp or something like that. Yeah, that was a, that was a place that it happened at, okay. Skeeter Camp. It's just up there. And then, you know, there's also a lot of sightings up in that area. There's a couple little towns, Sitcom, and I don't know the other one, but there's a lot of people that see Bigfoot all in through there. There's even a um, an account of a county worker. I think it was last last winter we had a big windstorm up in that area, and they sent someone to check the road to make sure there's no trees across the road and stuff. And he actually had one just walked right across the road in front of him. Oh That's wow! Douglas no, county, I remember that. Douglas County worker. I, I yeah. was living. I was living all the way up San Susi, um, the very top of it, and we had um, a tree fall down in our driveway and it took out the whole power line and it took us we were out yeah. of power for about 48 hours so well yeah no i didn't even yeah, hear so that, about that a county worker huh where about was that e, did they say it's it's up on that coos wagon road also that road that goes okay. through there oh wow yeah that was that was just i think last winter when that happened <laughs> but um you know, I, I hunt around here a lot and I see, I've seen so many of these tree structure things where a lot of them are in the shape of an X. You'll see them out in the woods and, and something carries these big trees there, big, you know, limbs or whatever they are and jams them in the ground mm-hmm. and in the shape of an X. So, I mean, I always, you know, I'm always trying to debunk this stuff and looking, but there's no way a uh, human can carry a log like that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're a pretty big, strong guy. Out in the woods. <laughs> I've met you personally. Yeah, and I, yeah. Know some, I know some really big, strong guys. Yeah. Some guys that are 6'8". Your kid and, is big and strong. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Got some so. big people in our family. <laughs> but uh, And then also, I've seen trees that are just weaved together. Like, someone took the limbs and just weaved them together somehow. I, I can't explain it in, in teepee shapes around trees, just out in the middle of nowhere in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, few footprints I've taken. It's yeah, uh, you know, it's really hard here this. in Oregon. It's really hard out in the woods here to get a good footprint because of all the, the stuff on the ground, you know, all yeah. the pine needles and everything that's fallen forever. But I, I had a really, I saw a really good one once by a Creek. And it was raining, of course, during hunting season. So by the time I got back, it was pretty washed away. But I do have some uh, good pictures of footprints that I got up around um, oh, London Road, up above Cottage Grove Lake. Yeah. I think they, there was a trackway there that Cliff Brockman or some of those guys it was the longest. It was, I think, it was one of the longest recorded trackways. The second one of the first longest trackway recorded. It was like yeah. seventy some odd tracks or something. It was insane. Yeah, there's a road pro- right before that is called Razor Road that runs up through there. If you know anything about mm-hmm. that area, me and a friend of mine were up there, and he was actually in the creek finding agates, and I was hunting, and I went walking up this old logging road right across the road at a 45 degree angle here's about eight footsteps perfect 
big, probably 16 inches long, but they were huge wide. I mean, what, eight, 10 inches wide? And as soon as I walked up on these things and saw them, my hair just stood up on the back of my neck. It's just some weird thing that your body does when you see something that's not natural. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, and then I, I got some pictures of those too I could send you. The road was really hard dirt, but you can make them out. Oh, no, that'd be great. Yeah, and just to let everybody know, <clears throat> um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some of those pictures from you and the one of the, the Bigfoot that you took and go ahead and throw those up on the Facebook page for everybody. So you guys yeah, can you go can, there, and I'll put the link down. Yeah. It's down. It'll be down below the interview here on uh, YouTube. You guys can click on there and go check that out. So Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much anywhere you go here out in the woods, if you know what you're looking for, there is a lot of, um, a lot of sign of Sasquatch. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of areas that are a lot more active than others. Twin Lakes area up here, mm-hmm. up above us. Yeah. Very active area. We've been up there and just right above me now, I found a lot of stuff just up the road here. Is idle, you. idle wild or whatever it is. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, idle wild. Yep. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's, uh, there's some sightings in that area. I was there, I don't know, a few weeks ago and I saw some trees weave together and just a lot of weird things like that. Mm-hmm. Things mm-hmm. that a human could, couldn't possibly do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, a lot of stuff, man. Uh, so, there is. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, Let's see here. Um, you know, kind of going back to you know the, the 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 picture itself of the Bigfoot. Um, what what kind of led you to believe, other than looking at the picture itself, you thought it might be something other than a bear? Was it just the picture? Um, the picture, and then when I kind of saw it squat down, when I very first saw it. Okay. You know, bear doesn't really squat down. <laughs> okay. I mean, they might turn around, but um they're not always standing up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And did you ever go back up there to kind of maybe get an idea, maybe um, how tall it was or how big it was or anything mm, like that? No, I, uh, I should have went and took a bunch more pictures over there, but I didn't at the time, mm-hmm. but I just walked over there and checked the whole area out real good. Mm-hmm. And, um, there was nothing there. Then we just kept hearing that, weird beeping sound further off to the right kind yeah, of cross weird. between a, a bird and a and a, a piece of equipment alarm <laughs> that's weird yeah it was real strange <laughs> and the clicking it was so fast and loud it was almost like a warning you know i guess i don't know yeah yeah hear a lot about that warning signs x's and noises yeah. um things like that yeah interesting yeah we've we've heard we've heard some tree knocking out especially out in um twin lakes area okay so yeah, you go out like, and do a lot of you go out and do a lot scary. of research research out there yourself uh, i've done some with my brother normally comes out in the summer for a couple weeks and that's that's all we do the whole time Oh wow! Okay. So we found we found footprints, and we try to go online and and look at the the latest sightings, and go right to that spot. Okay. And we've been pretty lucky about finding stuff with that. But um. Nice. Where do you guys go and check out for latest sightings around here? Just like the BFRO or something? Yeah, there was a a gal that was posting stuff. I don't know if she was real or not, but. She used to have a website, the uh, Ballyhoo or whatever it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Linda Perry. We used, I know her. Yeah, we used to um, we used to go off of her stuff a lot. Um, I don't know if it was true, but it seemed to be okay. You know, we found a lot of stuff in the areas that she was saying people told her about. Yeah, I know Linda Newton Perry. She's yeah. yeah, she's a pretty nice, nice gal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was real nice. Me and my brother met with her and her husband. Over in Sutherland, Oregon. Yeah, 
Yeah, I met her uh, personally. Mm -hmm. Met her about two months ago. She had a little uh, a little Bigfoot thing going on there in town one day. Yeah. So. Yeah, she was doing uh, stuff similar to what you're doing, but it was just a blog. Yeah. And um, people would call in, and then it just happened to be my brother was here in June at the time. There were some sightings that day, and we ran right out there. And um, we found a few footprints and stuff. My brother, we have the, we have a uh, Facebook page, the Southern, what is it, the Central Oregon Bigfoot Research Association. And there's a bunch of pictures and stuff on there of what we found around here. Plus, Let's see. he lives in Oklahoma, and he's found a bunch of stuff. Central Oregon Research. Central Oregon Bigfoot oh, Research it. Association. Got it right here. Yeah. So I just like that, and I'll go ahead and follow that along. And anybody that's listening in, you guys can go over there to Central Oregon Bigfoot Research Association and uh, yeah. check that out. <laughs> yeah. But there's a few years of stuff that we found through there around here and, and in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. We also found a big piece of hair down there in Hodubi, Oklahoma that uh, Cindy Dosen is actually checking out right now, the lady from Beachfoot. Mm -hmm. She's doing an analysis on it right now for us, actually. Oh, cool. So I haven't, I've, I haven't heard back from her yet, but um, hopefully it comes out unknown. <laughs> 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 it looks unknown to me. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Now, these, uh, uh, some of these pictures mm -hmm. of some of the structures here, are these from you? Yeah. Okay. Those are mostly from around here while I'm hunting that I just take a picture of. Actually, the day that I saw the real good scent print by the creek, mm -hmm. down kind of out of Myrtle Creek or Cow Creek, there's a Union Creek that road yep. that runs up into there. Mm -hmm. I was actually hunting up in there, and I saw this just the perfect footprint down in the sand by a creek. And I didn't have my cell phone, and it was raining like crazy. Okay. So was, yeah, when, I see you have some of the encounter stories from here on there. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks. my brother put a lot of the stuff on there. Yeah. From around and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, that is awesome. Um, <laughs> that is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm always looking for someone to go bigfooting with, too. I can't oh, find yeah. anyone around here. Oh, Everyone no, no, talks no, about me. it on Facebook and stuff, but yeah. Yeah, no. I'll definitely um, take you out and show you some stuff. I, I know I would love to yeah. do that. Me, I've, I still got four kids at home, but I, I can get away here and there. So it's it's pretty awesome and fun. Um, yeah, yeah, it is. So I actually went up and did about ten hours worth of uh, oh, geez, ten hours worth of uh, video, uh, or I'm sorry, audio on this little thing. Some of you guys are looking at the video right now, and now I just got to try to figure out how to break it up and compress it. So. I can <laughs> Out there but <laughs> yeah i'll tell you what i really didn't get nothing really on it that i think except for one thing um and this is up you know where the callahan's is where you go out cal uh what is it uh, callahan road or whatever that is going up the mountain yeah yeah it's so steep there my car started smelling and uh it oh, got wow. warm yeah um but i have to tell you man it was i don't know what it was it was like this weird little mumbling that lasted maybe a second and a half you know it was just yeah it was just like this like i, I, I don't know <laughs> i was like yeah what was Strange that stuff. just out of nowhere and it seemed like it came from there was this little tiny little stream like thing that was running from the side of the road there because you could hear the stream wow. in the background playing all night and at that huh. moment, when he heard that, there were crickets, but the crickets nearest the, the recorder were dead silent. And he just heard this little, no, no. it was weird. <laughs> yeah, there's, a, there's, there's an area up around Twin Lakes where there's nothing. It's like, like a dead zone. I mean, there's no sound, no birds. It's, yeah. it's kind of eerie, eerie, and your body does some weird feeling when you go there. Really? So... Yeah, yeah check that out. I, I don't know. Yeah, there's some strangeness there. That's for sure. Hmm. That but is. Yeah. That is odd, man. Odd. Nice. So, but I, I, I know where there's probably 20 structures 
out in the woods I can take you and show you. Oh, that'd be great. And, um, and I've been to a few of them and my cell phone won't work. It won't take pictures. I mean, you, a lot of times you don't have service in those areas, but mm. for some weird, strange reason, it'll drain your batteries and you won't take a picture. Um, I can grab my, uh, I can grab my digital camera and see, see if that works. Yeah. So. I mean, um, we even have, I have a Android and my wife has the iPhone and neither one of them. Hmm. So who knows what it is. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll bring my uh, digital Dream. camera and I've got like tons of, uh, I've got all kinds of batteries for that thing. I just showed up on the camera here, but cool. uh, <laughs> I just keep loading them and yeah. taking as many pictures as we can until the batteries are all <laughs> gone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know a, a weird area right up here above us, not too far by that idle wild yeah. where there's a bunch of structures. And I think we might have an encounter there. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Really? It's, so have you uh, heard heard yeah. anything when you're you've been out and about doing these encounters? Any screams, hollers, whistles, whoops, anything like that? Oh yeah, all that. Really? What, uh, tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Um, it's so weird because if you camp out, normally you hear it at night at about three a.m. And um, when we were up there at um the Twin Lakes, we heard some hitting late at night that almost sounded like gunshots. It was so hard on the trees. Jeez. echoing through there and then um i think we were over around remote oregon and we heard some of that whoop, real loud real fast and it's so um echoing that it almost sounds like it's a machine or something you know it's such a strong yeah. sound i actually but, just had yeah, a gentleman a gentleman you know, on here that had been out towards a remote that's way out to, that's out west if and, you take off that yeah. Coos Bay wagon road, it'll it'll hit 42 over there. I think it hits 42 somewhere wow. over over there. And then there's a Rock Creek Road. You go up that. There is so yeah. much stuff up in there. That's, we got That's, pictures up there. I mean, we got some footprints and a lot of structures up in there. Oh wow. Yeah, I think that's what he had yeah. mentioned, Rock Creek Road and all that place out towards remote um, mm -hmm. out that way. He had mentioned just a lot of stuff. Uh, he was talking a lot about the Bandon area and everything else. But, um, yeah, he talked about inland more um, outside of Coquille, out around remote and all that being a pretty yeah, crazy area. Yeah, also Powers, Powers area. If you keep going, you know, there's that <laughs> SRU Lake, which was Squaw Lake, but – it had to get politically correct, so they changed the name to SRU. <laughs> really now? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. But anyways, a friend Small of mine, lake. he knows a guy. He knows an old guy, I guess, that kind of lives in a bus up there as a gold miner, kind of into the wild kind of guy. And um, he's actually got a picture of a mama Bigfoot holding a baby that he caught on a game camera. And it's it's decent. I mean, it's really a good one. Really? But this guy, this guy, I guess, he says certain times of the year, he's lived there a while. They come through there every year, like traveling through that area. Hmm. And there... he hears them, sees them, all that. Man, I wonder if we can get a copy of that picture from him. That'd be awesome. I know. That's why I was telling my friend, you know, if he could go up there and get a copy of it somehow. i know how sticky those guys could be though man oh, I've, met, I know. I've met gold miners gold panders mm -hmm. around these areas oh, man. i know oh, those guys got the yeah, best they... encounter stories in the world the best evidence in the world but i'll tell you what they um they they'll talk to you knows, all about it but that's about as far as it yeah. goes they won't yeah, show you anything if they don't know you or anything <laughs> but, uh... nothing no. Mushroom pickers. A lot of mushroom pickers have encounters, but uh, a lot of them don't want to talk about it because they don't want anybody in that area where they make their living, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Uh -huh. but, and there's a lot, of, a lot of people around here. I used to live by a truck driver out on Melqua, and he told me he was going up oh, Taiyi Road where the little bridge cuts across and goes back up in, into the hills there. And there used to be a restroom there. There was like a Wolf Creek little rest area. They've taken it out now. But um, he was hauling logs out of there one morning, and he saw Bigfoot digging in the trash can there where the restrooms were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, he saw him back there. Yeah. Jeez. 
No, I, I you know, I, I didn't know it was that lit up around here with, with Bigfoot all over the place. I, I didn't. There's a, you know, there's a lot of it. If you can get the people to talk to you about it, mm-hmm. it's, you know, a lot of people think you're crazy or whatever, but. Yeah, that's, uh, but, uh, that's pretty intense. I, I actually get a lot yeah. of, uh, information and I get people that have been talking to me about the Cow Creek area out of, uh, Myrtle Creek. Yeah. 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 That's a real good area. That's, yeah. um, I just took some pictures down there. I went hunting, um, two days ago with my son and we took, I took some pictures down there. Some weird okay. bones I found on the side of the hill looked like finger bones, real small, and uh, a couple big trees crossed over. Wow! That were put there. Huh. And I was just walking out there hunting. I mean, I wasn't really even looking. Mm. Says, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. uh it's a pretty intense area around here. But uh, you know, that's that's what I wanted to do today. I wanted to get you on here and kind of explain yeah. to us a little bit about the pictures and stuff that you uh have been taking. And I'll uh if you want to send me the picture mm-hmm. of Bigfoot that you got and then uh um I'll uh um I think the other pictures are on your Facebook, right? Yeah, on that um yeah. Cobra site we call it the Central Oregon yeah. Bigfoot. Research. Yeah, I'll go in there and grab yeah. some off of that those off of there, and I'll go ahead and. Uh, yeah. um, you got some of the the footprint pictures on there as well. Uh, I think I do. They're probably okay. pretty much kind of all on there. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll go through there and grab some of those if you don't mind. I'll share them up on the old Facebook yeah. page, and uh, I'll be, be linking. Awesome. I'll yeah. link over to you guys so that everybody can check that out and. Uh, so if you guys are listening to this interview and we're just kind of chatting today for just a few about the uh, picture itself and a little bit more about uh, some of the real, you know, I guess really hot spot we have here in Southern Oregon between, you know, Roseburg and, uh, or actually between, I guess he would say Twin Lakes and all the way over to the coast. Um, just real hot spot stuff here. And uh, just wanted to get that out there and share those images yeah, out a- there as well. So. Yeah, there's a few, you know, real hot spots. Tiller area down south. Oh yeah, real I hot. Know Tiller really well. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Cow down Creek there. Area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I'm there's from... probably about five of them, you know, that are the real hot spots. That Coos Wagon, Powers, Remote, up around Twin Lakes, Idlewild, Tiller, Cow Creek. Those five or six areas right there are the really the hot areas. Yeah, the. The ones down around Southern Oregon are going to be out towards uh, uh, up around the uh, Hyatt Lake area, um, up yeah. behind, um, in between Ashland and Mount Ashland, and out behind Mount Ashland is great places out there in the Colstein Valley is a good area to go out to as well. Um, yeah. That's pretty hot out there, and also up, of course, towards Applegate has always been a pretty hot spot. Yeah. So... Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. All right. Thank thanks you. for sharing that. So uh, anyways, hang on one second, Daryl. And you guys, thank you very much for being on here. I'm going to share that stuff. If you're here on the video right now on YouTube, you can you can just open up the description box down there. I'm going to have a link to the uh, Facebook page, and you guys can go over there and check out some of the photos. Okay? With that, God bless, and I will talk to you guys later.